Welcome back, Zero K fans, to the September 2019 tournament recap stream. Our main host, Dominic or Shadow Fury, and we're on to Random Map Gen 12 by 12. That is literally the name of the map. It is a randomly generated map. That is 12 by 12, because that's how map sizes are done, although it's also screws with the map extension. But yeah, so it's a randomly generated map that is 12 by 12. Wanted to make that absolutely clear what the size of the map was. So you have Dyeth and Orange Sky again. We have Spider and Shieldbot coming out of them. Up against Steel Blue and Ultra Godzilla, who we haven't actually seen yet. Steel Blue going in for Jump Bots and Ultra Godzilla going in for Shield Bots. Which is an interesting choice. And this map is the currently generated map. I don't know how much variation there is in the map generation for this one. But the currently generated map is very hilly. So good for bots. It would be bad for vehicles, but it doesn't matter what bots you take. Jump bots, I guess, if you want to play jump bots, go and play jump bots. Jump bots are a little bit tricky because of the fact that they're very micro-intensive. But, hey, if that's what you want to play, go for it. I mean, I'm a little bit concerned whether or not that's going to be able to work on a map this large. I mean, just getting enough units to actually maintain the territory control with jump bots is difficult, to say the least. Especially when you're up against shield bots. And sorry, up against spider bots. Shield bots and spider bots, both, actually. I feel like... Ah, okay. I feel like jump bots are not the best choice against shield bots. They're really getting as cloaky, but they're kind of... I don't know. Felons can really destroy them. Rogues can make their life miserable when there's enough rogues. Puppies don't one-shot bandits like they do glaives. I mean, it's not a terrible option. I mean, moderators do a really good job against shields, but it's not the best option. Please over coming in here, getting rid of a few metal extractors. Nice micro off there. Always a good thing to make sure to do because the death explosion off of metal extractors will be a problem for fleas. They will die. Like this one might, if it's too close. Actually, pro tip, if you use the... Ooh, so close. If you use the fight move command with fleas, they will get to the optimal range. Like, they'll get as close as they need to and no closer. Which you really need to do in order to make sure they don't get too close to things and cause themselves to die to the death, to the death explosions. It's a subtle thing, but really important. Speaking of... No more harassment! Actually, that metal extractor getting healed up too. Good job there. By Steel Blue, making sure that there's not going to be a problem going forward. So, territory control is currently kind of iffy. I mean, Orange Sky managing to at least avoid getting this convict killed off. No damage dealt to the actual convict. I don't know if... Was... Was Ultra Godzilla trying to get under the convict shield? Because it didn't look like it. No, they're fight moving. So this, the, bot, the bandits are not going under the shield. Not a problem anymore. But, yeah, it's always the thing about fighting against shields. You, do, you can go under the shields. And you do bypass the shields completely. Hi, Shiny. You do bypass the shields completely if you go under the shields. You don't have to fight through them. You just hit the health directly. But we aren't seeing that too much. We are instead just seeing a lot of harassment. And the North team losing metal extractor after metal extractor, but still managing to maintain a reasonably solid amount of territory control. However, this is where I'm seeing the jump bots being used. They're not being used to try to maintain territory control by simply having units around. They're being used to maintain territory control by attacking aggressively, getting rid of everything they can, going around the sides and wonky ways to tear apart every, everything by, from every angle they can find. And they do that, and they do a really good job of that. So that, that works fairly well. I mean, the important thing is whether or not Steel Blue can actually manage to hold on with their forces, because they're the ones that are holding the fort. I mean, they're the ones that are actually making sure overall... Or sorry, Ultra Godzilla. They're the ones making sure overall that nothing is actually going to be destroyed territory-wise, and it looks like that might be a problem. I mean, there's some good raiding coming in here from a couple of these bandits, but that's... Actually, this one here, too. Doing a pretty good job. But overall, the, this is not working out super great for them. I mean, the North team does have a stronger economy. And they are... Like, Orange Sky and Dice are doing a great job economically. Their territory control is pretty solid. I mean, the bandits... They're trying. 
failing, but they're trying. It's a really good try. It was a good attempt. Ooh, never mind the firewall coming near this. This is where the jump bots can come in as well as when you get the artillery pieces coming up. However, I still don't know there's a whole lot actually being built up. Like, moderators are coming up. That's good. Moderator, firewalker, pyro. Oof, that is... That is an expensive army composition. I mean, that can work if they don't die. And to be fair, not a lot of fleas are coming in to try to kill them. And the pyros will be able to take out the fleas, but there's no pyro with this right now. It's just moderator, firewalker. That cannot deal with fleas very well. At least not when the fleas are up close. And again, the south team kind of on the back foot. They do have to push in. Pretty hard. Well, admittedly, once the geothermal plant's done, it, or geothermal plant's done upgrading, that will be a decent amount of overdrive. I don't know. I mean, the pylon's being built up. That's good for overdrive. But again, this is kind of risky. Because right now, the south team is building up a lot of forces, or a lot of an economy. So they're in a position where they're soon going to be able to have a very strong overdrive base. But whether or not they actually get that in time before they lose enough territory control that it becomes a, no longer useful, that remains to be seen. That's really the question. And overall, harassment attempts coming in here are at least mildly successful, but the North team ending up with a very strong economy despite that. And not really losing a lot of territory either. I mean, Dice not too worried about the Firewalkers coming in here. They're not too concerned about maintaining anything. I mean, they have the Aspis here. That's going to do a great job just stopping the flames from doing any damage. While at the same time, Orange Sky going along... Or Dice, no, Dice and Orange Sky both. Going along the western side of the map. Very keen on tearing apart everything over here. Now, to be fair, the Advanced Geo Plant is up. The Overdrive is going. There are pylons. And this one last Solar Collector should be enough to start really pushing the Overdrive. Uh, that's up. Oh, this pylon's not up yet. Shoot. That pylon up would be different, but it's not! And it may not matter. I mean, the... Oof. The temp's coming in here from the Ravens to try to take out what they can. They're doing a decent enough job. Did manage to slow down the forces enough to actually give Ultra Godzilla the fighting chance, but... Still not great. Unfortunately, due to lack of an air pad, there's no way that these Ravens can do much in the meantime. So ultimately, the Ravens are still going to be coming in. They're still going to be... One at a time, maybe, at best. If they don't die in the process, which they most certainly will. So it's outside of this point, a little bit of a back foot position. I mean, Dyth and Orange Sky doing a great job maintaining their their control. And now consider the territory control right now, like, all, more than half on the north side. I mean, south side, at least they have overdrive, they have reclaim. They're holding on really well for the lack of territory, but you can only do that for so long. And this is what, exactly what I was worried about for the jump bot use, is that, as we can see, basically, it's 1v2 as far as the actual territory control goes. And with Ultra Godzilla having gone for air as well, it's even harder, just because, well, what can you do when you have all these air forces? They can't control territory. They always have to go back and re repair and rearm, and again, why are there no air pads? If you're building this much air, but once you get like six or seven ravens, and you're using them consistently, build an air pad. It'll make it that much faster to get them back in, in commission. But that is not what's happening. What is, however, happening is that overdrive is at least being done, so the economy, again, is even, despite everything. Despite the massive disparity in territory. But it's still not going to be necessarily enough. I mean, Dyth... I got the shields up. They're stopping the firewalks from doing all that much damage. Death and Orange Sky both just harassing where they can. I mean, I like the use of the Raven here, but really didn't do all that much when you consider it. Now, getting rid of a couple metal extractors here and there, it's helping. I mean, the north side is dropping back a little bit, but again, losing ravens in the process every time. And more being constructed, but that's money that could be used to build a solid ground force. Like this force right here, although to be fair, Jax on... Okay. Iris Cloaked Jax. That's a good idea. I like it. Although it kind of gave away the Iris with the ravens coming in here getting in and out of Cloak. It doesn't matter, the Jacks coming in here, able to get rid of the Stingers. That is exactly what they need to do. Get rid of the Stinger. I mean, go into the back, get rid of some of the Metal Extractors. Or get rid of the Caretakers. Actually, get rid of the Caretakers. Or, no, I went for the Factory. Not something I'd agree with. Get rid of the Caretakers first. Caretakers are a lot easier to kill. They're way easier to kill. They're about the same. I mean, the same actual build power as a Factory. They're a bit cheaper, sure. And their opponent still has the ability to build stuff at all, but... 
You don't have to risk as much to kill him, but there's the last shot in the factory, and it's not... No, never mind. One to the caretaker. Good, good, good. Hit the caretaker instead. It's exactly what you need to do. That'll keep North's team from being able to actually use the economy they have. Or at least make it harder. They have enough caretakers. Yeah, 30, 40, 50. No, they don't. They're actually going to be accessing. That was a good play. Yeah, the South team's actually going to be able to produce a lot more efficiently than the North team. Which we're seeing already. We're... That, I mean, both that and the jack push actually massively destroying dice hold on the front lines. In fact, I don't know if there's... What is... No, there's not much. There's a couple Lotuses apart from what was built up in the front lines. But now that that Stinger's gone, there is nothing left. The South Sides... Are, like, Steel Balloon Ultra Godzilla will be able to just wipe out Dyth and Orange Sky's forces on the eastern side of the map. The western side, there's a bit more of a conflict. The Firewalker will be going down. I mean, valiantly fighting, but not quite enough. But over to the west, the eastern side of the map, it's completely different. The south side is just destroying everything. The Firewalkers have been wiping out... I mean, this is what the Firewalkers are supposed to do. When there's no shields around, the Firewalkers are a great artillery piece to get rid of static defenses and just static construction in general. Now, to be fair, this entire force here is built up. They are ready to go. So it's not like it's over yet. But it's pretty... It's going to be harder to hold on just because this force here... Yeah, now they're dealing with Cloak Jacks again coming into the shields... And not being detected at all. I don't think they even know that there's a Cloak Jack coming in at all. Unfortunately, the Firewalker Friendly Fire reveals the Cloak Jacks. But they're still coming in here. This is where the Felons are actually a bit of a liability because Jacks do have a lot of HP. I did say Felons do well against Jump Bots. I meant more against Pyros. Against Jacks, however, is the opposite. The Jack HP makes it impossible for the Felons to do much. And yeah, that is going to be it. The Dice Commander manages to run away with the Jack coming in after it. Oof. Does not quite manage to get in. Dice able to dodge it. With good micro off that commander. But it still is going to be tricky. Just because that commander now... It can't be in the front lines. And Dice has been using that on the front lines this entire game to help defend. And on top of the Aspises. But there's not much that can be done now that all the shields have been drained. I mean, they're, they're recovering. Slowly but surely, they are recovering. But it may not be enough. As we can see already, like, the South team, as soon as they broke... Yeah, there's Dice Commander down. As soon as the South team broke that stinger, like, broke that hold in that firebase in the front lines, everything's just falling apart. I mean, they had all these Ravens in the back just waiting for something. All the shield bots that have been built up gradually. And then once the South team was able to start getting metal extractors, I mean, they already had the production facilities. They already had the infrastructure to actually make it work. And they already had the overdrive infrastructure on top of that. So, yeah... As soon as the front line got broken, that was it. Game was over, just a matter of time, and Steel Blue and Ultra Godzilla end up taking it quite convincingly after what was a fairly back-and-forth fight. In fact, it was a fairly back-foot fight. Just very strong overdrive coming in from the advanced geothermal to keep their economy on par with their opponents long enough to take that front line and then push in. Really strong play there from Steel Blue and Ultra Godzilla. So the last, last replay of the main rounds, because there's going to be a couple tiebreakers as well, is on White Rabbit. It'll be Steel Blue and Ultra Godzilla again, this time against 400 and Fire Pluck. So stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple minutes. But not randomly generated this time. This is actually a map that was built. Well, okay, maybe it was randomly generated beforehand, but it's static. So we'll get back to that in a couple minutes. <laughs> 